year and actually many people are wondering about the the financial outlook of 2020 and uh, I'm also wondering the same thing so I, I do have some friends okay who, who have some expert outlook of what's going to happen in the economy or financial scene in Singapore and I'm on the way to meet one of them um, his name is Marco and he's one of the property uh, experts that I know in Singapore so let's go find out what he has, what he has got to say about 2020 So which comes first actually? Which comes first? Ah, which should come first? Uh, for employee, for employee, invest for your employee. For businessmen, set aside money for investment. For Hi ladies and gentlemen, okay good afternoon and uh, today I got a special guest with me today and one of the property experts in Singapore and uh, really has a great insight of how an employee can transition to become an investor and today uh, I'm coming from the perspective of e-commerce and Marcus com uh, Marco is coming from the perspective of property investors okay so now uh, Marco pleasure having you here Thank you for inviting me, Andrew. It's my pleasure. Hello, hey. guys. And uh, we've known each other for probably about two years already, and and yet so many things, uh, so many knowledge has been exchanged between the two of us, and I'm very grateful to have you here. Thank you so much once again. Thank okay. You. Okay. So now, um, why why am I doing this video? Is because I got a sense from the economy that people are thinking that 2019 wasn't too good and 2020 is their hope in 2020. So that's why coming from this perspective, what are your opinions about 2019 and how 2020 is like for you? Uh, if you're talking about property market, yeah. uh, this year we are very excited. Uh -huh. This year a lot of developers have to clear their stock. And uh, we expect new new land sale to happen in 2021. And the government has always had a policy that new land sale must always be at a higher price than the previous land sale. Mm. So when that happens, whatever you buy this year is likely, most probably, going to appreciate. Now when that happens, it also means that next year, the property price, once appreciated, may be not ideal for newbies to enter. Okay. So. Uh, um, I learned my property investing from many people okay. and some of them are top investors themselves. Uh, they themselves run very big uh, property agency. So I spoke to them and then uh, they taught me that they think they, they think that uh, this year the price will at the end of the year slow, show a bouncing, bouncing up. So which means that the windows of opportunity for us to grab more undervalued deal will be, slight, will be closing slowly and slowly. So regardless, now our Singapore, our Singapore property price is regardless of outside economy. It's actually very much determined by the government. Okay. So whatever happened outside Singapore does not really affect well, that, that was actually one of the big questions because like we talk about trade wars, we talk about all those mm. changes. So now you're saying it's not, not uh, but it's more, more, how to say, determined by our government. Our policies, correct. So if let's say for somebody, now you're saying the window is going to close it's, quite soon yes, already. I believe so. Then if somebody haven't started, now what should they be doing? No. Oh. There's still plenty of time because from now to the year end, we still got another 11 months. So there's time for you to either sell your property, decouple, many things to it, maybe gear up, get some cash and buy second third properties. You should buy in when it's low and let it rise. But at the same time, uh, I like to mm. buy below market value and rent at market value or even higher. So they always have pocket money. So if the property price never increase, it's okay. I'll still have pocket money, which means that I'm being paid as I wait. So coming back to pocket money, uh, we, we had a conversation earlier and the question I asked was like, um, um, as, what is really the link between employees or business owners to property? I think the general consensus is many people don't really know what they should start first in terms of 
planning their lives. Like, what's your opinion on that? Correct, correct. Um, I spoke to many students and I myself mm. went through that cycle alone. Uh, it's very sad because uh, when I look at it, much of my earlier property investing knowledge is based on people who don't have properties. Yeah. And they tell me how they feel on how to invest in properties. Yeah. And those became my, those formed my program for buying properties, which I never enter. The then I learned from the people who own multiple properties, the earlier teachers who are willing to teach. And their mindset is completely different the other way around. I mean, just like a bank loan, is it good or bad? Yeah. Uh, when I buy a property, should I quickly pay up? Yeah. Uh, should I buy a property? Should I invest in a property that I personally like? You know, all these are things that uh, when I'm being taught new ways of thinking, it's totally the opposite. Um, and okay, I, I, these are really quite deep questions to mm, ask really. Yes. And, and I would say maybe this short interview probably couldn't go into can, too far of the can, details. Can. Maybe I would say like, now in this this video yes the main thing that i like to really address is people who are new people who are stuck yes especially people who are saying okay i got not enough money uh but i'm willing to put in a bit of effort to explore yes then as an employee now what should i do if i'm a new business owner i what should i do if let's say my uh if let's say the the amount of money that these people have isn't really that big yeah yeah, so uh, if your amount of money isn't that big, then uh, try to avoid buying residential property because okay. in residential property, you need 25% down payment. Okay. Yeah, so you can buy commercial properties and sometimes you can get down payment of 10, 20%. And um, if you are lucky, you buy properties that already have tenants and then because of tenants deposit that they have to come back to you, you'll offset even more the buying price. Wow, how to even get started on that kind? Yeah, so you have to you have to learn how to buy prop. You have to learn to spot properties with lease. So recently, we spotted a few properties that has five years lease. Okay. Which means that the moment we buy, okay, the seller pay us five months deposit plus one month advance rental. Okay. So that's six months. So the property is about say about uh, nearly a million dollar. Six months of five k rental is thirty k. So a million dollar property will require you to have at least 10% down payment. So that's okay. 100K. Okay. 100K minus the 30K deposit, you got only 70K. Of course, you have to add your stamp duty, blah, blah, blah. But this makes your, your achievement very low. And uh, if you talk about commercial property, yeah. two guys, two employees can actually collaborate together. Each one come out 50K and yeah. then form a company that owns a commercial property. Mm, yeah. so sounds really interesting on that. Yeah. So now what you're saying is that actually um the when people say i can't find money to put down the down payment uh, yeah. a lot of times not that true right no no so my guy it goes back to this belief money is just an idea when you have no money mm. it's actually when you have no idea so you join schools you read books you read forums because you want to get the idea and that's called money making idea so once you have the idea you can convert you can take actions and then convert those into money so that's how people become money magnet. Mm. There is like if we in business school, uh, we yeah. are always being taught. So, okay, first thing is cash flow. All right. Then after you have cash flow already, then yes. you invest your cash flow. Yes. And the key thing is, of course, you got to have some kind of way of making money or through jobs or through business right. for your first cash flow. What in, in these three things like business, uh, cash flow, investment, what should be the correct sequence for the layman? Okay, so business must generate cash flow. Yeah. Every month, a small portion of cash flow must be set aside into another bank account and let this account grow. As soon as you hit 50K in that account, you can be a property owner. 50K, that doesn't sound that difficult at all. No, no, no. Last, last year, I bought a property at 360K. My okay. down payment is 10%. 36,000. Uh -huh. Of course, you add the tax, everything it comes to 50k. How yeah. difficult can that be? And that property will give me pocket money about 500 bucks a month. You know, like, uh, I just want to play devil's advocate here. People, there will be audience will say, Oh, yeah, bo, Marco, so simple, man. So, what's the, what's the, what's the, is there any catch? There's no catch. The yeah. problem is that we are always taught that things cannot be easy, things must be difficult. Money easy come, easy go. But actually that's not true. When I believe all that, that's where I remain poor. When you learn 
how to invest. I find that it's so easy that I don't need a degree or PhD. And most of the property owners I met outside who has multiple properties, man, they have not even have G, GCO level, man. So you learn from them. Is there a way of calculation in property investing that can ensure that you will not lose money? Yeah. So uh, we go around. Mm. First thing we do is we buy undervalue. So you okay. buy cheapest than the guy who bought earlier. So we are undervalued, we are very safe, which means that already it's a profit built in. Mm. Then we make sure that unit can be rent. So we will ask you to do some tests before you buy the property. And once you do the test, it's proven correct, then you buy the property. Then you look at the numbers and you look at your age and you go to different bank because different bank can lend you different tenure. Now, when I was young, I was told to pay down the debts as soon as possible. And as a result, when my wife and I first have our investment property, most of our income went to pay down the loan, which is wrong. You should stretch a loan, pay as little installment as possible so that the renter can give you pocket money and you can live a happier life. So those are those numbers. If you have time with me, maybe about two, three hours, I will clear all those numbers up for you. Sounds good. So, like, um, for a person who is interested to become your mentee, what do you ask of them? Well, becoming my mentee is difficult, oh. mm. because I only have 24 hours, 7 days a week. I mean, no, man. I mean, become my student is easy because we have a support group to mentor you. Mm. So, I have senior coach who will guide you. Mm. So, just join our community. Lo. Come listen to our talk. See what we say makes sense or if it doesn't, go away. But I'm sure that everybody who attended my talk goes away with some value. Awesome. And uh, now, one, see, we, we've been talking about property, we've been talking about investment. Um, more like, I want to ask something a bit deeper. I want to ask something a bit deeper, like the foundations that got you to where you are. I mean, we all are humans, will have our own life's journey. And maybe one of the questions I ask is like, what were the significant milestones in your life that led you to who you are today and the way that you think? Midlife crisis. <laughs> Tell us more, man. Well, uh, so I used to build robots for a local factory and the factory start to move out. So I was in manufacturing. So uh, I have to travel overseas to find food for my family. Okay. And uh, so it started from one week a month. It gradually proceed to progress to three weeks a month. So imagine three weeks a month, I'm sleeping in Sheraton Hotel, my own bed. And then coming home one week a month, sleeping on a bed with my wife. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't connect. My, I lost connection with my children. I lost connection with my wife and my family. And start to wonder, why do you live for? Uh -huh. All the zeros in the bank are meaningless. And that's why I realized that you must always learn how to buy back your time. How to make your money work hard. Mm. And that's where I really go to learn how to invest even deeper. Now, be, prior to this midlife crisis, you and I had other properties which we are collecting passive income. But along the way, we lost interest because even though they are making me money, they are boring. So boring, I lose interest. And only when I'm hit by midlife crisis and I see those numbers still coming in, I realize, oh my God, partial of my bills are still being paid by all these properties. So how? So the epiphany is actually that despite whatever you're going through, the property is paying for your bills. Yeah, huh? yeah, you can. Look, today I'm, sleep, I'm sitting here talking to you, correct yeah, or not? Yeah. Do I worry about my expenses? No, my expenses will be paid. Hmm. My bank loan will be serviced, which means that my property loan is being paid now. So every moment of me doing nothing, yeah. equates to my net worth going higher. Now try that being an employee. Uh, what's, what's your philosophy? Toren the Taoli. Money is mm. just an object, mm. just a result, a, by net, a by, byproduct of doing all the right things. I wasn't like this in the past, but, and I keep chasing money and I have no money. I got money big, I lose them, I got them, I lose them, I got them, I lose them. Until I learned this idea that money is just a result of doing all the right things. Then I focus on doing all the right things, I don't look at money and I now become money managed. What is, um, like, okay, understand that your foundation you're saying is midlife crisis, then you realize epiphany, actually yeah. property still pays money. And now that you are going to a bigger level, yeah. Um, what's your mission? Well, my mission now is to surround myself with grateful friends, do all the things that I want because I have time and money freedom. 
um, nobody can ask me to do things I don't like. I focus a lot of my energy more this year than last year on doing charity work and I want to impact more lives. Um, it is very easy. We have changed our formula. We have gotten even more effective. We don't break the laws. We don't do anything unethical. And um, if as long as you're keen to learn, regardless of your age, no one is too old, mm. there's a possibility. Um, okay. Then what are the habits that you do on a daily basis that fuels your success? Oh, so on the oh, so and on the daily basis, I read books, I read articles, I I watch video tubes, I listen to audio books, all on how to becoming a better person or a better investor. Mm. And then uh, I'll spend the rest of the day with my wife. We will go for go find friends to have lunch with, have dinner with, mm. or we will just spend time in the park working out. That's my life right now. Working hard and um, more more like okay. Wait, rephrase the question. Activities versus mindset. Mm. What's your take? Activities does not equal achievement. Working hard got me nowhere. You see, many people work hard in their job, but they are getting nowhere. They are doing a job that can be replaced by a 60, 70 years old man. They will get nowhere. Achievements come from the head. Plant your head with good mindset. Take out the Windows 95, Windows 98, or some people DOS 3.1, and update with the latest Windows, and you will appear. You will you will break through very fast. What will be some of these recommended education that you would say everybody should go through? Well, read some. Uh, maybe some books like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Maybe mm. books like Robert G, uh, G. Allen on uh, multiple, multiple streams, streams income, income, which is yeah. what you are doing. I yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah. Or uh, even no money down buying, and then um, read some books on the local entrepreneur who make it big. And then uh, if you can read my book lah, I also have a book. A second book coming out. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> what, and what's the second book title? Uh, second book title is Sleep. And grow rich, sleep and grow rich. Isn't that what every one of us? Yeah, that's what I do for e-commerce also. Yeah, alright. Eh. Um, and and maybe you do know e-commerce a little bit. Yes. What yes. do you see is the connection that e-commerce has to property investment? Oh, so okay, so this brings us to a topic of MSI, multiple streams of income. Mm. So you have an your employee, you got full time job. Then you started e-commerce, which will give you some pocket expenses. Now, when you got more free time, you can even go to MLM, that gives you another stream. And then you can do part-time work like tutor, everything, that gives you another stream. But all these, stream of in all these streams will give you excess income, mm. which will park in a bank account. Mm. And once the account grows big enough to pay a down payment like 50k to 100k, don't wait. Don't save for a bigger property. Enter with a small property first. Multiple small property makes more sense than one large property. So as soon as you hit 50 to 100k, buy something. 50 to 100k, buy something. Don't care where it is, don't care how you look. As long as you can rent out and let your money work hard, that is a property you must buy. Actually, I think that really hits the nail on the head. Leh. It's not about the big deals. No, it's not. It's all about 50,000 one small property, 50,000 one small yeah, property. Yeah, 500k properties. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, my philosophy, just to share with the audience also, like, has always been um, you should always have your first pot of gold so that you have secured at least some income for your, for your own livelihood. Yeah. And the way that I look at it is e-commerce is a means of being able to calculate your profits before you spend your money to buy stock. Yeah. Which, that's why to me, the most important part about my entire system is to have that profit calculator to ensure that whatever is the per transaction basis you are able to make money, yes. then that way you are able to scale up with more and more products. Right. And then now you are saying, once that, that uh, accumulation goes to 50,000, put it into one property. Right. And that's what I see as a connection already. I right. do have another hypothesis though, and you let me know if this sounds logical e-commerce as a business um go if you sell on marketplaces like lazada shopee carousel and all that there's a lot of competition all right and usually price war does happen Correct. but the the fundamental truth is still the person who has one of the lowest prices and all the right. best feedback score mm. will have the highest volume of sales all right. so if i'm coming from a company's perspective okay i want to create this company i build some niches and I let those transactions come in in volume say maybe 
twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars worth of revenue a month. In about one to two years, would this company become valuable enough to be able to gain loans for a property? What's your opinion on that? Six months. Six months ah, wow, that's even better already. Some banks allow six months. Some banks wants two years. It depends on banks to bank. Ah, okay. So it also, if that's the case, can if, if I'm looking from what you just said, that means one of the strategies e-commerce people can use is to have multiple niches on multiple companies over six months, put the price low so that volume increases, and that way use that as a means to get loans from different banks. All right, correct. So the banks will look at cash flow and profitability, and also the bank balance. So if if you do it correctly in about six months to a year, you can actually you can use that to buy properties without your own TDSR. So you, without own TDSR some more. Yeah. So should it be one company multiple banks or one company one bank? Uh, case to case, yeah, case to case. Uh, this is a very deep question to us. Hmm. It also depends on how far you want to go on the journey. Hmm. For many of us, we loan from multiple banks. Yeah. Awesome, and uh, and that one I thank you for that because that's also changing my thinking. Yes. I was really brought up from from a very lao siren kind of way. Don't owe money, don't have debts, and then and then work hard, and then and then retire from the savings. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thinking I had. And can I can I say something? Yes, please. You just said two words that I don't like. Go ahead. Lao siren. Uh. Or three words. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, it's not lao siren. Okay. It's, it's um outdated. Outdated. That, infor that information, that program, serve our parents. Mm. It will not serve you. It mm. will not serve our kids. Mm. So it's not about Laosu. It's about knowing the money system, knowing the money mechanics. Don't speculate. Don't gamble. We enter safely. We exit safely. In fact, we never exit. I mean, look. If a property is making you money every month, why do you want to sell? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, one of the Questions lah. What are the chances of cock up? And if people do cock up, what's the reasons? People do cock up. Main reason is their emo went high. Mm. They say they say, oh, I must buy a property by by which month, and then they'll just grab a deal by which month. We don't do that. I must buy good properties. That's all. I don't put a deadline to it. So as soon as I hit the deadline, the 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 parameters that I set, I know I'm ninety percent very safe. Awesome, thank you. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so too. now, now in the near future, like for this particular cycle that Singapore mm -hmm. is going through, um, where do you see the money needs should be parked into? Uh, many business will be struggling for cash flow, and many business may want to sell the premises that they own, commercial premises, and they want to lease back. So I love to work with all these entrepreneurs. Because once upon a time, I was a struggling entrepreneur. So now, most of the properties that we bought last year and this year will be buying from a business owner and then rent back to them. So that they can cash out, they can pay their employees, they can pay their suppliers, they can keep their business and me at the same time collect rental income. So what you're saying, this becomes like a lifeline to the business to gain cash flow and yet uh, maintain the continuation of the business. All right. Correct. So in the business, we have cash flow, you go through harms. Yeah. So they are getting over the harms. After this, they'll be okay. Of okay. course, some will, some will not be okay. La. okay. So that's, that's way to guarantee, that's way to safeguard. If halfway, they can't pay the bills and they bankrupt, what happened to me? Mm. If you use my method, you'll still be safe. So in summary, the method or the layman's method as what we say should be first get the cash flow, 50,000 right. small properties. Right. Do not be too greedy. No. Okay, and Don't get emo over no. the whole thing. No. But the focus should be get the cash flow investment first, yes. then building more on other businesses. All right. Correct. So you get the cash flow, get the cash flow growing, cover all your expenses, get more, cover all expenses. In the end, you have no more expenses that you don't cover. Right? With this method that you are saying, uh, sounds like maybe after a short while, yeah. no need to work anymore. Leh. Yeah, yeah, some of our students uh, stopped working after three months, six months. Within, we have many students within work who didn't work within a year. Yeah. Yeah, so out of um, all your students, 100% of your students, how many percent of them actually really go down to get properties? Maybe less than ten percent. 
Yeah, and and I I share that with e-commerce as well. Yes. I noticed there's still the eighty twenty rule. Yeah. Um, eighty percent will do nothing. Twenty yeah. percent will do something. Out of twenty percent, ten percent will become really exceptional. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, is this really just human beings? Yeah. This is the mindset we are programmed. Mm. That's why there are eighty percent employees. Got it. Yeah. So. You spend three days with us or one year with us. We try to we do our best to give you new program, uh, to encourage you to show you true results. But somehow, whatever happened in your childhood, to most people still rule their future. So once upon a time, you may be told, I was told I'm not good enough. Mm. But I must erase that. The moment I can erase that, I can fly. Not but everybody can erase that. Sorry. That that is actually I would say probably the most important question here. Yeah. So for everyone in the audience are, uh, and who who you know that you have got some negative programming on. So what would you recommend? What courses you recommend? Uh. Go around learn from coaches who has, who came from a poor background and make it big. Mm. But make sure the coaches have the right experience. Today, mm. there are many fake coaches out there who don't have any experience, and and they pretend to be coach. Ask them for credentials. Ask them to show it to you. Mm. Make sure you learn from the right coach. When you learn from a lousy coach, you get lousy results. When you learn from good coach, you get good results. And my preference are coaches who have once a while gone bankrupt or who have gone very poor, and they found a way to break through. And these coaches, they are so inspirational to me. Awesome, um, thank you. And that really comes back to a bit of my story here. So I I do recognize one thing. I don't know if you agree with this. Um, poverty and prosperity are really two extremes of the same line. In order for you to really experience prosperity, you must have experienced some po- form of poverty. Agree on that one? Yeah, correct, correct. So it's because of that that I realize why. A person with normal brain can be rich, and why a person with normal brain can be poor? Yeah, but you yeah. gotta be poor because of your mindset. You can be rich because of your mindset. So oh. just change your mindset, and you'll be rich. Thank you for that point of the day, which is you change your mindset, you'll be rich. And uh, uh, what do you? Uh, one one last question, like um, besides self, network is also very important. Uh, some people work with assholes. Mm. Some people are afraid to ask. Mm. Some people are, are scared to even take that first step. Mm. What would you say to these kind of people? Well, go find a community. And uh, first, you, you just become a spectator. You watch in the community who break through first. And when a person breaks through, you clap, you celebrate. When you celebrate for others, your energy also becomes stronger. Your belief system becomes stronger. As long as you clap enough, you celebrate for others, your turn will be next. Awesome. Yes. So ah. community is very important. Awesome. Yeah. And and thank you so much for that. Uh, I think I've come kind of come to the end of my questions really. Any questions you have for me? Yes, Andrew. I think what you are doing is very great. You are helping people to grow a pot of gold through very small money efforts. So that's very awesome. In fact, I, I think I, I connect with you only two years ago, but before that I was watching your videos and listening to your to your to your talks and all that. And um I've been no I really want to connect with more people like you because uh, I think together we can really help a lot more people. Which is why we are talking today also yeah. because honestly I'm um being a bit vulnerable here. I have been a solopreneur for a long time and I realize that being a solopreneur um, when you face with problems, hey, yeah. who's there to help? Yeah. Some my old belief was to say, hey, property investment, real estate, uh, sorry, real estate and e-commerce. What's the connection? Mm. That's why I, I stay away. Mm. But one of my learnings I had last year through some setbacks is uh, no man's an island, and especially mm. people who are like-minded mm. like us are willing to also help each other yeah. and that's why my goal for 2020 is not just to be a solopreneur anymore mm. you can everyone can start off to build their own part of goal right. but it's important to really learn from other industries the or similarities in thinking or the techniques that we can learn from other industries to apply to our industry and to that uh, I, my mission this year is really to get to know a lot more like-minded people like us so that we can form a community that serves the people even all right. better all right uh, make a bigger impact leverage on each other work less achieve more 
Thank you, thank you. And I uh, appreciate that. And th- if you've got any comments, uh, please feel free to leave down comments or any questions for myself or for Marco here. I uh, will be happy to, to guide you through in your own journey uh, of your or your own financial freedom journey or your journey to your own success or to your own legacy as well. And uh, humbly speaking, if we can be of any service to you, please reach out to us so that we can be able to build this community where we help each other. Okay, have a good day ladies and gentlemen. Any last words for our audience? Don't miss this opportunity. The next property cycle will happen 8 to 10 years later. Don't wait. Don't, don't wait now so um, you've got 2020 to really uh, um, get started into this so my encouragement here is that uh, whatever you are feeling that you have set back in 2019 let it go already okay let it go and just move forward okay because after that, the results are really worth it thank you thank you very much Marco thank you thank you thank you, thank you. on a last note this is something that we want to share with everybody the past, the past does, does not, not equal the future, future. Doesn't define your future. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.